Hello guys, this is a simple explanation about machine learning algorithms. Today we will be talking about machine learning, specifically about the categorization of algorithms and the concepts behind them. Stay tuned. Machine learning is a subsection of artificial intelligence. In the computer science context, when we talk about machine learning, we generally mean the algorithms that are used to train machines. Now you might be wondering, how is it possible to do something like that? Well, the answer might not be as hard as you think. Of course, there are algorithms that are complicated, but the basic principle behind the algorithms is primarily the same. Most of the algorithms aim to identify patterns that usually separate the difference between two things or many things from each other. To simplify things, machine learning algorithms primarily fall into three categories. The supervised ones, the supervised ones, and the semi-supervised ones, otherwise known as unsupervised and supervised, or you might even say reinforced learning. I think this is the most common term used right now. Let's talk about supervised algorithms. These are the algorithms we will basically train with information we know the answers to. One example will be to know if today it will rain. This means we supervise the training of an algorithm with information we know represents raining conditions and tell the algorithm that when it encounters similar information, then that means it's going to rain. Let's break it down so it can be easier to understand. In this case, we know that there are two cases, either it will rain or it won't rain. This makes things much simpler. The challenge that now remains is to figure out what information we want to use to identify the answer we want. Now, you might be wondering what kind of information this might be. Well, let's think of this like uh, you, the viewer, is being asked this question. How would you think about this? Well, mostly you would come up with some indicators that you previously experienced that reflect raining conditions. So, for example, is it sunny or not? Uh, or is it cloudy? Is the temperature low or high? Is it windy or not? We can use this information to basically guess if it's going to rain today or not. Assuming we provide good information based on the history of what has happened, so basically based on the experience we have, then that will leave us with a machine algorithm that can guess with a certain degree of probability if it's going to rain or not. It is actually recommended to split our data to two sets, one that will be used to train the algorithm, and then the other set will, that will be used to check how accurate the algorithm based on the information we provided is. If we don't like the results, we can add more information or more data to increase the accuracy. And voila! Now we have a supervised training algorithm. And as you can understand, now the supervised stands for the fact that we trained the algorithm based on the data we sorted out and we checked how accurate it was as well as improved it. Unsupervised algorithms are kind of the opposite of supervised ones. The idea here is to provide information but in this case, we will not try to use information to classify an answer. Instead, we will use algorithms that will detect patterns that will help us identify relationships between data. To simplify things, imagine that we are using an algorithm to basically figure out the relationship of purchase products from customers. For example, we can run an algorithm on a large dataset of supermarket purchases, and the algorithm can help us determine the commonalities between customer purchases. This could point us to something like uh, when a customer buys ketchup, then they are more than likely to buy mayonnaise. The algorithm basically will sort out between information that is less relevant and information that has better relationship with other information. The more information the algorithm gets to train and the more similarities we will be able to find in these relationships. Finally, semi-supervised or otherwise known as reinforced learning. These kinds of algorithms are primarily used when some pre-existing information exists but at the same time other information is not yet known. Therefore, we need to teach it as it's training. As usual, I will present you with an example to get an idea. Let's say we build a robot mouse and we want it to explore a maze. But instead of thinking of it with the complexities of learning the unknown, let's make this a game. We will add areas in the maze where the mouse will gain points when discovered, and the deeper the mouse is in the maze, more rewards will be awarded. Ultimately, the exit of the maze will yield the most points. Of course, we will teach the mouse some tricks, how to move away from the dead-end roads, to keep learning the map as it moves along, and so on and so forth. Then we will assign a high-level goal to the mouse. The goal is to earn the most points while trying to exit the labyrinth. So how will that look? 
Well, the mouse will have to start exploring in a random way. Basically, take any path that leads anywhere. This means that it will aimlessly wander until it gets points from reaching areas where more points exist. Every time the mouse gets points, it will basically train itself as to what the best route is for getting points. Then it will always start to take that approach over others that it discovered since it yields more points. Now all this is okay, but we will need to also add a random element where the mouse will always take a random additional path. This will enforce the mouse to try a new path just even when the algorithm seems like it has the best path. This is done to make sure that other areas are explored where the points it will get are not high, but the result will yield the highest points. And that pretty much is the idea. This will be done repeatedly until the mouse has laid out the best possible movement to exit the labyrinth. Thank <laughs> you.